believe the over 65s are this country's biggest untapped resource. There are 10 million of them living in the UK with a complete lifetime of expertise and skills that I just think we're missing out on. Because you suddenly feel you're completely on the scrap heap. With 5 million saying their main companion is their telly and 30% feeling they serve no purpose to society, I think it's time to put their skills and experience back into the marketplace. Go, guys! <laughs> Oh my God, fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to carry out an experiment. I'm going to set up a pop-up employment agency. You use Twitter, Shirley? I've just got used to electricity. To find jobs that will take our pensioners out of retirement. No, but I die on the job. <laughs> yeah, I know what dirty old job you're thinking of. Give them the confidence to get back to work in the future. It gives you encouragement motivated <laughs> and give us all the benefit of their expertise and know-how i haven't passed my cell by by, by any means yeah! i'm looking to recruit builders to barmen gardeners to gym instructors and carpenters to hairstylists i can't resist um, a challenge it's an opportunity for them to prove that they can still make a contribution for excellence we strive I've got three months to turn some of the feistiest people I've ever met. You're too mouthy. And you're too bossy. There's no humour in this at all. Into a discipline. Can you not get your ears syringed before the day? Organised. Well, that's a smashing start, isn't it? No, there's no pressure whatsoever, darling. And professional... <laughs> ...outfit. Get the hell out of here! I'm confident that my experiment will be the catalyst that my retirees need to find themselves new jobs. I feel like I'm a teenager. It's true. It will be a chance to prove to everyone once and for all... I'm out of my box now. I don't want to be put back in. ..that the last thing you should ever do is write them off. Never underestimate the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all be better off as a result. My pop-up employment agency has now been up and running for a month. I'm so excited that uh, I'm not retired anymore. Ah. <laughs> My pensioners stormed to success in their first job, catering for a party. One, two, three. Yeah! I just want them back. <laughs> Since then, we've had lots of interest from gardeners wanting to put their skills back to work. Whilst my agency team are hard at it digging up suitable jobs, I want to catch up with our green-fingered recruits. This morning I'm meeting the gardeners. And the interesting thing about the gardeners is I'm not necessarily looking for people who've had a career in it. I'm looking for those talented individuals who maybe for the last 40 years have been out there pruning, creating fabulous stuff. And I want to share that with people and say, look, Look what you've got. Look at this talent. Let's put them out there to work. Oh, Jill, I think mm. it's really important when anyone comes into the agency, they know what it stands for. Do you remember this? <laughs> Can you remember it? Hold it, Maggie. Yep. Yes, if we if die... If we die on the job, <laughs> we, we won't, won't charge you. you. Yeah. No, but I die on the job. Yeah, I know what dirty old job you're thinking of, and that is not what we're thinking of here. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> How's that? And don't make it so crinkly. Presentation's all. OK. OK, back to work. Let's get our interviews going. Hey, lovely to meet you. The first of our gardeners keen to put their skills back to work is Norma an amateur gardener and member of the Royal Horticultural Society. Norma was a teacher, but is now a full-time carer for her husband, who has dementia. Very devastating thing. But, but he likes being in the garden as well. It means a lot to him. How would it make you feel if someone said, OK, Norma, here we are, here's some money for a great job, you're going to go out, you're going to meet other people and work together as a team of gardeners. Well, that's a dream, isn't it? Is it? Absolutely. I know, it'd be wonderful. I'd be thrilled. The extra hours that you'd get for your money would, yes. would mean that you would have extra care for your husband. Yes, exactly. Which, in turn, gives you a bit yes. of freedom. Yes, yes, very much so. Yes. OK. Mary, 
Can I give you a hug? I'll oh. give With a garden. whopping 50 years gardening experience, Gloria got the bug on her father's plantation in Jamaica. She now devotes all her time tending to the local communal oh. garden. I love you, Mary. Well, you know what? Yes. You're not so bad yourself already, Gloria. Look at those nails. Look at this with the colours on it. I'm wearing my garden. I have these colours in the garden. So I'm wearing my garden. I love flowers. Every time I go in this shop, I'll buy flowers and I'll buy nail polish to match. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm doing my own thing and it makes me happy. I love that because I've heard of coordinating your fashion and your nails. I've never, ever heard anyone who coordinates their garden. And then... <laughs> my nails. All I will say yes. to you, Gloria, is if I looked out my window and you were doing my garden, you would just be the brightest flower out there. I don't want tea, there. I don't want coffee, I don't want yes, food. Yes, you would. I just I'd want go to out and I'd be bringing you the hours. tea and coffee. Eight hours, I'll stay there. It's this abundance of personality that will set my agency apart from the competition. She's a grafter too, and there's plenty more where that came from. Never too old. Never too old to have experiences. No. How old are you? 83. Oh, God, you look good on it. <laughs> Yeah, we really like doing the allotment, but I, oh, when I go to plant something, got it, Lizzie. He appears behind me as though he's drawn to, to say, "Is that in a straight line?" I can't. No, it's got to be straight because when you've got to get the hole between it, see. Yeah. What do you think about age? Do you think about your age? No, not really. Nah, no. I like a challenge. You know, I love my garden. That's helped me tremendously. I don't like things beating me. Darling, hello. Lovely to meet you. Come and sit down. Thank you so much. Finally, it's Annie, a former interior and landscape gardener. During her career, she redesigned over 70 homes and gardens, and in the 60s, her own company won a Civic Trust Award. It's been a very, very challenging time for me, um, both emotionally and as a result, physically. Really, it's affected you physically? Yes, absolutely because you suddenly feel you're completely on the scrap heap. Like nearly four million older people, Annie lives alone. Her daughter moved to the States 24 years ago. A lot of the people seem to have family close by. And um, I sometimes find it quite hard and I think, you know, it's really nice they can go off for their Sunday lunch or whatever, you know, and um, I can't exactly just hop over the pond. <laughs> For me to be getting back into work and to have what I call a proper project, I think is crucial to my survival. If I don't have a project, there will be nothing to stimulate me or give me any reason to carry on. Okay. I adore your glasses. <laughs> They're fab. Oh, I'm glad you're getting your tips from Dolce, Annie. <laughs> I would seriously have any of that lot coming around to do my garden. I don't think I'd go into work that day, just sit in the garden and listen to them as well. It's made me feel just uplifted. I'm confident our teams have the skills. They just need a chance to prove themselves. With our gardening recruits waiting in the wings... Oh, look at you looking all glamorous in your ginger. Jill's team have come up trumps and found them a job. It's a, a, a semi-detached house in Ryslip. Apparently a bit of a mess. Job in. I assemble my gardeners for a briefing. How many years collectively do we have between us gardening? 95, 100, 290, 390. 404 years experience between us. We're not adding our ages. <laughs> Piece of cake. Experience is our unique selling point, and the group are going to need every bit of it for their first job. A young professional couple have just moved into their home in Ricelip. They actually want a New Zealand style garden. Mm -hmm. what's, what's a New Zealand style garden like? Because when I think of New Zealand, I'm, like, I'm thinking spiky plants, but I guess not. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, they, they have a lot of, of plants the, the same as ours. Yeah. Yeah. Things mm -hmm. called formiums, which are like wide grasses that grow all the time and they're very shaped. This lot obviously know their gardens, and it doesn't take them long to get to the nitty gritty the £2,100 budget. 
that would give you the basis of a garden, but it certainly wouldn't give you anything that you'd have people round to look at and say, look at my flowers. Mm. We need some more money. No, no, we don't yeah. start with... <laughs> you are the expert, so you might need to manage the expectations of the owners. You know, this is what we can deliver within <clears throat> that budget. Mary, are you suggesting that we try to set up a meeting with the owners of yeah. this garden? Yeah, do a recce. Go around, look at it, and come back with what you think the suggestions are. Annie heads up the advance party, assisted by Maureen and John, married garden enthusiasts with over 30 years' experience of nurturing their own gardens and allotment. Good morning. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello there. Hi, Adam. Nice Despite morning. a tight budget after renovating their new home, clients Adam and Heather have ambitious ideas for their garden. I'm actually really excited about the prospect of getting the garden done. We really want the inside-outside flow and to be able to entertain people outside. It's kind of how I grew up in New Zealand. So this is the garden, Heather? The garden. Oh. Oh. Gosh. I suggest Agent Orange on the grass, first of all. That's going to blow and grow and blow and grow. The path doesn't look like it's actually been made. It looks like it's just been no. worn away by feet. Well, actually, we tried to do, not that you can tell, a bit of tidy up work around there. Maureen is struggling to hide her unease at the size of the job in hand. It gets worse when architect Heather brings out a mood board of the sort of garden she hopes for. So is this how you envisage this? Um, what is yeah. this? That's just some um, an idea I quite liked of paving. I mean, obviously, what we can provide will not be an instant garden because of the cost involved. Transforming this garden to Adam and Heather's high specifications will be a massive undertaking, and my gardeners need to manage their expectations. It's not going to be a sort of wow garden, not for a few years. I don't know what your views are, but I don't see us having anything of oh, that I, that's here. very grandiose. I don't think that we can provide that with no, the amount of cost. No, here. no. I think the clients are absolutely lovely, but I'm not sure if they can really get their head around the fact that they're not offering us quite enough money. My pop-up agency aims to take pensioners out of retirement and get them back into work. They get their mojo back and we all benefit from their skills. 404 years experience between us. So far, I've recruited a formidable team of gardeners. So is this how you envisage this? But my agency is open to all kinds of skills and expertise and we have an intriguing new recruit. Well, today we have an, a very interesting character called Tony. He's a retired RAF personal trainer. In fact, he's also a self-confessed ladies' man, so that should be interesting. He's definitely retired, not expired, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Is he married? <laughs> and here's the man they're all talking about. Ex-drill Sergeant Tony has been married three times, currently to a woman 20 years his junior. Tony's dream is to become one of the country's oldest personal trainers. Jill? Hello, darling. You said you're as young as the woman you feel. Is he going to be feeling us today? Well, I don't know about that. I see. mean, we should have been warned, you know what I mean, before we got here. <laughs> if I'd have known, I'd have gone into training. Oh, if I'd have known, I'd have come with less on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my corset on. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Before the agency can find Tony a job, Jill's invited him in for a test run with the team. Hi, I'm Maggie. Oh, darling. <laughs> the best one of the lot. Hey, nice, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, darling. Tony, it says here that you're a self-confessed ladies' man, so does that mean you're still into bed exercise, if, if I'm not being too personal? Not so much now, because I can't find anybody that fancies me. <laughs> I thought you were still married, darling. I am, I am. It's been 50 years since Tony was a drill sergeant in the RAF, but nothing has dimmed his passion for fitness. I still feel as if I'm in my 20s. At the moment, I'm trying to get to the gymnasium at least four times a week. I like the feel as I can walk into a room, throw the doors around and say, here I am, women, come and get me. 
and I know that it's being very, very big-headed, but it's just the way I feel. <laughs> for myself, I can't retire. I think it's absolutely impossible for me to sit on a chair and watch daily television all through the day, play on computer games, um, read books, and gradually die. Retirement to me is just a living death. Tony's giving the girls a taste of what he has to offer, and he knows his audience as this routine is focusing on double chins. Ah! Ah! And bingo wings. This is good for the pec muscles, which lifts up the boobs. Slight problem here, because when I go like that, how can I get them together? Yeah, well, I have the same problem. Don't no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tony, I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Just lift your right hand. 82, unbelievable, very fit, very toned. He looks really good. Ooh! <laughs> Tony has managed to leave hearts a flutter, and the team convinced that all that muscle and charm must be put back to work. I think he is just the sort of person that we want on our books, and he's obviously a, a professional, and that came across, and he's brilliant. Loved him, loved him. Even I could go to a class like that, <laughs> and I've not done any exercise for years. Meanwhile, I've arranged for our veteran gardeners to get some training ahead of their big job. For many, it's been decades since they worked with another person. I need to be sure that they can work together as a team. It's so lovely seeing you all as gardeners. You look like gardeners. For me today, this is about understanding the capabilities. How physical are you guys? We've got to test it before I set you out onto the world and charge a fee. I've asked horticulturist Tom Wheatcroft to set them a gardening challenge. We've got a really nice selection of plants here. I'm going to get you to lay me out and plant a mixed border. Come on, then, let's get going. Great. I want to learn about the plants, too. Yeah, to create an attractive design, they'll need to work together as a team. But I'm not seeing much evidence of that. OK. Someone told me to put it there. She's moved it. I'm going to just stand it. No one's talking to each other. They're all just wandering around putting their plants down. And they're moaning that the others put it in the wrong place. <laughs> It soon becomes clear that one team member in particular has a mind of her own. Every part that someone puts down, Gloria just picks up and moves it elsewhere, but doesn't say a word. And they're all putting their little pots down, think of that, and discuss it, and then she just picks them up. Well, I know. Gloria, if you're in a garden and you're working with six other gardeners and you want to move the plant, would you, would, what would you do? Well, I'm asking who would it there and if I could move it, but they're not here in Kazal talking Well, why don't you go and ask? They did say I could move the plant. Okay, but just say, whilst if you want to move that one. This is a team that's crying out for a leader, and it looks like one of them is keen to step up to the plate. Nanny's standing on the sidelines, directing everybody, but actually nobody's listening. Me, I would like to see higher at this end and yeah. then gradually move down to that end. Mm. There's got to be one person driving the boat. We can't spend time in the client's garden <laughs> doing what's going on here. <laughs> Horticulturist Tom steps in to back Annie up. We're very nearly there, but we do need, I think, one focal point plant, the formium needs to go in the middle of that border, the in hebe. front of the hebe there. Oh, yeah. okay. yep. The team finally settle on a design and at long last, it's time to get digging. Go and pick your tools and let's get going. Norma, yes. if you were able to set up a little kind of you know, gardening business, is yes. that something that would really change your life in some Oh, yes, ways? because it's something for myself, an interest completely different from other things. Mm. It's very absorbing, mm. isn't it? Mm. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. well, totally. And you forget everything else, and then you feel kind of refreshed afterwards. And Norma could really use the breathing space that gardening offers. She's been with her husband, Mukta, for 33 years. He now suffers from dementia. Doctor, here we are. Afternoon tea. You like this, don't you, darling? In a way, people talk about love at first sight as being very soppy and romantic and only something teenagers do. But actually, that did really happen to Mokta and I. It was love at first sight. 
Norma met Mukta through Amnesty International. He was a prisoner of conscience they helped free from a Pakistani jail. Well, I mean, we did some quite sort of politically revolutionary things. Um, the miners' strike was on, so we nearly bankrupted ourselves, <laughs> taking food and things to them for that year, but that was very exciting. He was an extremely strong man, and now he's very dependent and can't fully express himself. That is heartbreaking. Like a million other over 65s, Norma provides unpaid full-time care. Gardening is her only respite. I like creating a nice scene and an atmosphere. Very relaxing and very enjoyable and creative. It's to do with colour and I used to paint a bit while I do the gardening now instead. With the team building exercise coming to an end, the gardeners are finally pulling together. Despite a combined age of 672 years, this lot are as strong as oxes. These two are going like the clappers, yes. aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 83-year-old Irene was forced to retire at 65. Helping her is Marion, who feels far too young to be a retiree. You make a nice little right. teamwork here? Yeah, we're getting on well here. Right. I heard you saying, though, I'll just be the digger, I don't want to be the digger. Well, it's... I've got a bit more muscle, cos I might be a little... Not young, but... She's yeah. a young one. Oh, no, she's I'm 83, I am. She's brilliant. I know, I can see her. Top, oh, blimey, Irene's physically together. Massively physically together. And Norma, 78. Oh. In there. With the pensioners showing some muscle, the final few plants go in. I now have a team. I mean, you know, there were some hiccups, but I think generally, look, we've done a garden. It's a lovely yeah. result. The one we'll be doing is about four times the size, but don't worry about that. In just six days' time, my unretired gardeners will be doing this for real with their first paying client. 82-year-old retired drill sergeant Tony wants to put his skills back to work as a fitness guru. You need an attitude to say to yourself that you're uh, coughing and dodging and you're going to keep yourself as fit and as healthy as you can. My agency have landed him a job. Today he's come for a trial run working as a fitness instructor for the over 50s. Tony will be taking over from the class's regular instructor, Paul. I think initially the class might be a little bit surprised when they see Tony, but um, I think it will be an inspiration to them to see someone um, of Tony's age, putting them through their paces. Many old people have the skills, but aren't given the opportunity to show them off. It is like going on stage, actually. That's your audience. Some nice looking birds there. <laughs> this is Tony's big moment. Hello, everybody. Before we start, just to let you know that I can do what I tell you to do. I mean, if I do... <laughs> right, that was good. We're going to work your tummy muscles. Lift your feet up. Tailoring his routine to the older crowd, Tony plumps for a chair-based workout. Just bend. Up. Before you're finished, you'll have muscles like a superman. That's good. OK, girls, that's all we've got time for. Thank you, you've been very excellent. It was a pleasure taking you. Thank you. So what did the class make of their new trainer? It makes me feel, hey, if he can do it, and I'm a lot younger than he is, then we've got to continue. When the substitutes come in, we've rebelled and said, never again, we'd rather really? not have a lesson. Yeah but they wouldn't say that for you. I certainly think Tony could teach future classes. In fact, I'd be interested to see him teaching some of my younger people. I think they could learn a thing or two. I believe that I've still got it. I can still teach, I can still do the exercises, and I'll last another 18 years, I might give up then. Success for my agency as Tony leaves his clients happy 
and a whole lot closer to re-employment. My gardeners are all green-fingered, but there's one in particular who stands out for his horticultural know-how. Robert's passion for gardening started at the tender age of three. His flowers are multiple prize winners with his local horticultural society, and his own garden is regularly thrown open to the public. Hello, Hello Robert, nice good to, good to see you again. I've brought the team together for a brainstorm and to find some inspiration amongst his perennials. Yes. Did you do all this garden, Robert? I did all the garden, yes. I planted absolutely everything. 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 Mm. Oh, this is lovely. Lovely little rose. It's just a glorious mix, isn't it? This is a garden 43 years in the making, but my gardeners have just two days to satisfy the high expectations of their client. It's going to take their combined expertise to pull it off. So what can we put in where we'd spend our money to give that wow factor into the garden? They like textured grasses. I suggest yeah. textured grasses there and there. So, okay. you, so you overlook the, the, the grasses in the summer. No other plant did they man mention except lavender. Mm. Right. Then we give okay. our lavender. Well, then that's a really important yeah, note. It is. Yeah. Listen, that is don't you think that would yeah, look nice it. down by our cars? As soon as we start talking about plants, my gardener's knowledge and passion blossom into ideas. Tree fern already, yes. so we don't have to buy, and possibly right. the bottle brush. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and also the castor oil plant. Excuse me, you would, that would be sufficient. Really? Yes. Sufficient. Yes. Oh, yes. You, I can't see we want to buy anything else. Really? Brilliant. It sounds like we've got this sorted. Yes? Brilliant. Two days and a tight budget means my gardeners need to be canny about making the money stretch. I genuinely think, with the amount of plants that we want to buy, we should be able to go into a garden centre and do a little bit of negotiation. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. So I got the shopping list. I'm sending in Olive and Gloria to use their personalities to strike a good deal. We can't be picking up and don't know how much we're going to spend. Because like me, I would spend all of it in here. Gloria lives alone in a tower block and volunteers all her free time tending the garden at her local charity for the elderly. Good morning, flowers. I'm singing to the flowers sometimes, eh? And I'm saying, I want you to really bloom. And they just did it. They did it. They bloomed. Gardening is a lifeline for Gloria, who is estranged from her family. Last week when I was at my lowest hem, there was no family. <laughs> I have no family. They only want you when you're young. They don't want you when you're whole. If I didn't have the garden to go to and to keep me busy, what else would I do? It makes me happy. I think that going back to work as part of a team could really make a difference for Gloria. Look at that beautiful rose. Oh, it's quite good, 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 isn't it? Oh, that's a cordyline. Oh, yes. that does look like it should come from down under. Lavender, lavender. Three for five pounds. Uh, seven pounds, that one. Buy, Buy one, one, get, get one, one free. free. Right. Well, this is the important time now. We've got to do our deal. Have we totted this up in our head? No. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we would want at least 10%. I reckon it'd be really good if we were able to get them at 15. Let's see what we can do. Good luck, ladies. Thank Thanks. You. I'll be in the wings. We're starting a, a new business and we're pensioners. Hopefully we can organise some kind of discount. What about 5%? No, that's too small. Can you go 15? Too small. Well, we're pensioners. 10%. 10%. Ten. Ten can you go a little bit higher? Please. 12 and a half? Jamie, look how they look at you. Yes. <laughs> Give them my discount. Well, that's Jamie. really good of you. My discount, Your that's discount. 20%. Thank you very much. Right, Thank you, right. that's yeah. a deal. Make sure you come back to me. Of course we, we will. Right. Okay, we okay then. Together with the bigger plants that they've ordered online, Olive and Gloria have kept their whole spend at under £500. Right. 
I must admit, they looked me straight in the eye and they are quite cute women, aren't they? So no, it's fine. And they're going to be coming back like I wanted. Good stuff! Pretty please, pretty please. Well done, that's really good. Watch this Where are we here. going? The moment of truth has finally arrived. Morning, John. These retirees all came to my pop-up agency to see if they have what it takes to work in their twilight years and whether they'd get hired. Morning! Good morning! Blimey, I didn't realise it was quite this overgrown. The, th the most important thing today is that everybody knows what they're doing. Communicate, communicate, make sure that everything is as planned and that nobody's going off piste. <laughs> OK, right, let's get going and good luck. Are you looking very nervous? Yeah, I'm a control freak. That's fine. You're handing over your garden, you do realise that. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> I, I will see you in a couple of days when it's all done. And, um... Indeed, looking forward to it. All right, take care. Lovely to... meeting you both. Nice to meet you, Mary. Go and have a nice bite to eat, put your feet up. <laughs> yes, I think so. As a late addition to the gardening job, Heather has asked for our assistance to lay some decking. Yeah. Mind these tools. So my agency have drafted in a bit of extra muscle in the form of three OAP builders led by Raimondo. As a young rebel, Raimondo spent his early years drinking, dancing, chasing girls and causing mayhem. He put his troubled past behind him when he discovered Buddhism and psychic healing. I'm 72. 72? Mm. I would have put you and down no Botox, 60. no Botox, no <laughs> artificial stimulants. I was a Buddhist, I'm a shaman now. Well, my brother was I follow a shamanic path, I work as a healer and a medium, a psychic, and follow a spiritual path. And nature is part of it and gardening is part of it. Everybody, there's something we need to all discuss. Do you mind just sort of stopping for a sec? How are we getting rid of the rubbish? Now, I do not have that solution, but we've got to put our heads Can I together. Say something? We're going to get to that bridge soon, but let us do a little work first because yeah, no, already it must be gone 12 o'clock. What have you been talking well, it's it's about this plan? When is it going to end? Annie in the background is like the queen holding court and I think one of them is just going to maybe slap her over the head with a shuffle before the day is out. Any chance of a bonfire? Yes. A small bonfire? No, on a Sunday. No, you might no, if you're joking. No, Nobody's picked up a fork yet. Nobody's picked up a spade yet. The builders are getting on. They're all still standing talking about it in the background. Annie, can I just say something? Just Find a minute. through the house, but in bags, because there's those steps down which are a health and safety issue. OK, so the consensus is that we move everything through the house. It's when it's one of the most important things to deal with the garden. OK, thanks, everybody. That's great. There's not a bit of this garden that doesn't need complete overhaul. We are on the hottest day of the year with a bunch of pensioners. And they're still discussing it. I can't believe it that you've come with your own cocktail mixes. One of the agency's very first recruits was former head barman of the Savoy Hotel, Celine. You read people's mind what kind of cocktails they like. What like about me, then? Key. What about me? Can well, you read a... what spirit I would like? I think you're like a Key Royale lady, isn't it? I am a Key Royale. <laughs> I am totally a Key Royale. Really? Desperate to get back into the market, Celine contacted the agency and we put him to work running the bar at a Great Gatsby-themed summer party. If you've been the barman at the Savoy for 45 years, um, that is... that's gold. I think. So how do we market that? How do we get that message out there? How do we make Celine, you know, this kind of fabulous little brand, really? Take a seat, Celine. I think what Celine needs is some clear business advice. I work all, all my life in one place. Yeah. So marketing, this is I'm weak at. OK. Your service is a luxury service. You know, you came from the luxury world, you're going to be doing great upmarket events. If they ask me, yeah. OK, so then how much charge for, for an hour? 
I don't want to scare people. Exactly. Because the myself. thing is that you have to take into consideration is the fact that you're not just the barman that's worked in some local pub, you're the barman that's come from one of the best hotels in the world. So there's a premium that goes with that. So it's having that confidence not to panic and know what your worth is and charging properly for that. That's the most important thing. Don't start going, oh, I'll do it for this price for you because word will get out that you've done it cheaper for that one and it'll get back Absolutely in. Absolutely right. That's Never right. move from it. And what that will also do for you, that will mean that you don't have to go out there working every night. You're able to go, I'm going to do the ones that really fulfil me and, and, and deliver something that's great for my life, but I also have balance in my life. That is beautiful. It's been lovely seeing you again. Thank you, Mary. Give us Glad. a hug. Oh, you're beautiful. The thing is, he's nervous. He's never had to invoice, you know? He's never had to, you know, create a brand for himself and a business and marketing. And he's nervous about that. But I think once he gets over that hurdle, he'll be running. No two ways about it. Cos he loves it. He comes alive when he's behind the bar. I'm really glad to see that Salim is marketing himself to top-end clients. Tonight, he's landed a job working as head barman at the launch night of a prestigious new bar in London's Canary Wharf. Ah, hello, Kate. Salim, how are you? you? Wow, what a bar. Yeah, we're open now. Second so, uh... best bar in London. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to go and get changed? And we'll reconvene back here in a couple of minutes. I'd like to. Hello, guys. I'm sure you have your own equipment, but I just, I like to use my shaker. And my staring glass also. Salim has decided the signature drink of the evening will be his Barman of the Year award-winning cocktail. Well, guys, I'm going to do the Blushing Monarch, which yep. is uh, not very difficult. Campari, about 15 bills only. Gin, about 50. Yep. I was the only barman behind the bar not to use measurements. <laughs> <laughs> they trust me. Uh, the passion, too. Lard orange. You got egg white at all? The egg white. It's not for the taste, yep. it's for the shape of the prints. We garnish it with passion fruit. That's what I call a blushing on a cocktail. Beautiful. Very nice. Compali and passion fruit. <laughs> Where did you learn to make your cocktails? Actually, I was born behind a bar. <laughs> As I promised you, oh, the blushing well, monarch. Thank okay. you very much. Four hours and 200 blushing monarchs later, and Celine's first solo outing since joining the agency is a success. Working with Salim has been absolutely fantastic and I've learned so much from him. I did ask him, I was like, can you show me a couple of your little secrets? And he did, but I'm not allowed to tell. Salim has done a great job tonight and I think their business is, it'll be silly not to use people like Salim. The agency has changed my life. That is, that is for sure. They opened a new horizon for Salim. <laughs> thank you, goodbye, uh, good night. <laughs> good night, thank you. Over in Ryslip, it's a scorcher of a day, but the team have been hard at it and are finally making headway. John, you're supposed to be doing stripes. Where's the stripes? While some take shelter from the intense heat, one team member is determined to keep going. Break time is up, guys. <laughs> Gloria, come and sit down. Why you want me to sit down? I'll be sitting down when I go in my grave. I won't be laying down, you know. As the garden slowly takes shape, team spirit is high. Digging for victory. If you don't put enough on... Yeah, when I don't, you have to just go over it. Are we sure this is the right colour for the pen? It's a funny colour for a pen. I mean, I feel we're suddenly in, you know, Malaga. <laughs> I have concerns. Our client is an architect, so she's going to be very particular. It's time for me to have a little peek and see how my gardeners are getting on. Oh, my gosh! Oh, my gosh, that's amazing progress! I'm impressed by how much they've achieved, but I've spotted something that wasn't on the client's brief. I'm a bit blown away by this fence. Do they know they were going to get a blue fence? No. 
I right. suddenly oh. kept thinking that looks so dingy, that brown fence. Yeah. And I know I've done a similar thing on mine. I know the effect it can have. It's like having a new fence. The fence wasn't on the list, but for now, though, my team are in high spirits. <laughs> yeah, well... How has this been for you? Oh, fantastic. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm just sorry it's going to be finished today. You might not. You might get another job. Well, who knows? New career at 83. <laughs> By mid-afternoon, Annie's concerned that time is running out, and one person in particular appears to have gone AWOL. Ramondo, how can you be not a lot of assistance if you're round the corner uh, talking? I was only just round the corner talking for two seconds the first time today, so please do not mind me talking for two seconds. OK, well, well if you could just appreciate. You're the Buddhist, you should know about dynamics. She's just telling you her worries in a beautiful way. Love and light. Love and light. Share the love. Peace, peace, <laughs> peace. Harmony. We've got lots of plants, haven't we? Luckily, the team are soon able to find some common ground. And I carry three. As it's time to get planting. Where's this handsome one going, then? Oh. Don't talk about him like that. That's the most outrageous bit of flirting I've ever seen. There's no time for fooling about, so I'm relieved to see the team building day paid off and the planting runs like clockwork. That's, that's nice, Maureen. Yeah, lovely. So much happiness because everyone around loves the same thing. You know, and that, that makes me feel bigger than <laughs> big. Well, you bigger, are bigger than big, Miss Gloria. Than big. That's the beautiful thing about yes. you, is that you are I'm bigger happy. than big. big. Don't Here hurt yourself. Don't As the day comes to an end, Maureen and Irene get the final plant into the ground. Norma finishes laying the slate path, and just in the nick of time, the decking is done. Our Kiwi garden is finally completed. Look what we've achieved. Well, you've achieved. I've done nothing, actually. Did you think it would be as good as this? Yes. 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 Yeah. I'm really bowled over. Let's give ourselves one big round of applause for our first commission. <laughs> Despite their limited budget, it's been a remarkable transformation, turning this weed-infested wilderness into a beautiful New Zealand-style garden. complete with spiky plants in a barbecue area. They've even added a splash of improvised colour with a controversial blue fence. I love the garden, but what do the clients think? There you go! <laughs> oh, my God! That's amazing! <laughs> I can't believe how much you've done! They have all done that. They have worked their little... We can say. I was going to say sling backs off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this. You guys have done the most amazing job for us. I'm absolutely blown away. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's just one thing I need to check. What do you think to your fence colour? I think it's, it's fantastic. Really nice. It's, it's something that we were talking that. about doing, not having it just sort of, yeah. you know, plain old fence colour. The only no, thing now yes. is you've got to paint the other yeah. side. Yeah. yeah, but you do have to leave us with some stuff today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe they've done so much in two days. You know, the people have been funny, great spirit, real characters, and it's been an absolute joy, I think, actually meeting them and watching them work. It's a triumph for my agency. The clients love their new garden. Cheers, everyone! And an even better result for our gardeners, who were eager to get back to work. This is over a week's work, and we've done it in two days. And we're pensioners, you know? We're older people, but older people have got spirit and energy as much as anybody else. There's a total belief in everybody, and I think that's what's come through today. I think it's lovely. I hope it's the start of something. I'd like to think it's blossoming into something and it will bear fruit. <laughs> what an amazing job. We should just not have a set idea of how old people should be. That's quite simply. And I've learned from that. I feel now like I'm a teenager, and these two days here is the best days of my life. Oh God, I would like to have a project very soon. 
I'd always hoped that the work that my agency found for my retirees would be the catalyst that they needed to go out and find themselves jobs in the future. And I know it's worked. Next time, gardeners Norma and Gloria take on their first job together. I feel like a cry. <laughs> but with happiness, really. 66-year-old yeah. oh. fashion designer Hilary has her skills put to the test. Go away, don't you worry, otherwise I'll start laughing. And my retired tradesmen have a difference of opinion. I'm telling you we don't! Over an ambitious renovation project. Big cheers! Yay! Yay!